The more complicated you make your journaling process, the more friction you are likely to introduce. And the more friction there is, the less likely you are to actually journal. In this video, I'll share three simple things you can add to your Obsidian workflow that will supercharge your journaling habit without overcomplicating it. At its core, Obsidian is just a note taken up. It's like Notepad or Drafts or Google Keep. It's just a note taken up that lets you link your notes. But really, it's just a note taken up. So if you can figure out Drafts, you can figure out Obsidian. But the thing I want you to remember, the TLDR of this video, so to speak, is that journaling shouldn't be complicated. All you need is a pen and paper. The pen, in this case, is your computer. And the paper is Obsidian. And these here are just a few ideas to consider as you put down pen to paper. So the first thing I want to talk about is taking tangential notes in your journal. And uh, let's go generate today's thing. So yeah, let's just write something. So for example, let's say today, today I watched a movie called Wajib and uh, we want to link movie so that we can track movies we watch but let's say we also want to talk about Wajib the movie and you don't really want to get into details about like the movie in your journal because that would just like mess up your things so you can open Wajib in its own page and then write a review for Wajib so it's like and perhaps you don't want to call it just Wajib, you want to have it be a film and the year it was released, 2017. It's always updates. And now you can be like, this is an amazing film. So, now you have the review, but now the review is kind of just hanging on its own. We want to link it back to the note that it just came from. So we can have something here that says like reference note or related related and here we just put the date which is 2021 29th. So yeah, and when we go back here, now we are back here, and the note is here, and it's not messing up our journal. But it doesn't even have to be a film, it can just be like, I had an intense discussion. Maybe we can do intense discussion with my friend. But then now we are in the situation where every time you want to do this, we're having a blank page and it's just kind of annoying to do that. So we can go back and create a template for these things. So let's say new page and say tangent template. And basically what we want is just like the title, the title of the post and even before the title, I want to have related note, which is kind of the source, like where this thing came from. And, and yeah, and this is just a simple template. You, you can put, you, you can create your template however you want. Um, so yeah, we drag the template into templates folder. We go to settings, templates, and then we tell it where to find the templates, which is the templates folder. And uh, then we go to the settings again, hotkeys, templates, and it's command T, that is a thing. So now when we come back to today, intense discussion with a friend, command T, now we have the option to either put the daily prompt or the tangent template but of course we want the tangent template so we go tangent template and now we be like 
conversation about aliens and the related note of course is today mm. aliens exists so yeah that is the first one uh tangential notes this is something that you can add to your repertoire like anytime you want to go on a tangent and talk about things you can always do that and that way your entry is clean and it's easier to go through and then if you want to go into details you can just click on the thing and then you go there and then you can come back to the thing and then you go back to the film and yeah so that is one way to go about it and for the mood let's just say excited yeah the next thing that i want to talk about is the graph feature which is by far my favorite thing about obsidian and it's not that useful in terms of utility because literally like anything you can do with the graph you can do with the search function but the graph is just so pretty and that is one of the things that makes me want to use it more so <clears throat> that's a lot you can do with the graph which is uh something i can get into in, in another, another video um but right now i just want to show you how you can look for connections between things so this is our graph and already we see how things are connected the intense discussions are connected to sandy and whatever and the film is about love but also about that and if you talked about love it in like a different uh, entry it will connect to this uh, but like people from Reykjavik we've talked about a lot so you can come here to the filters which is this essentially like the, like, like, like the search function and uh, you can search for let's say movie and you see everything that is connected to the movie but um, this graph is kind of small so it's difficult to show you the actual power of this thing so i'll have to go to my own vault my own private journal vault and show you what you can do with that but before that there's another thing that i want to show you which is using groups to highlight certain things and what i do is you remember like all those like moods that we've been tracking like the excitement sort of every day at the top of the day we have a mood we're tracking what i like to do is assign colors to moods that way i have like an overview of how i've been feeling just by looking at the graph so let's say tag excited and excited we give it a green color and then And now we can just look and see these days are happy days and I have one sad day and I have more happy days than sad days. But you can tag this with anything really. You, you can have, instead of using tags, you can color them by file names. So you can say love, like I want anything with love to be green. So of course we talked about love in wajib so now wajib is green or it can be like anytime i mention sandy la la da be red and now red is with sandy so you you can color anything and uh depending on what you want to grasp and what you want to see in just a general overview like let's just go to my vault right now so that Basically, all emotions that I consider like positive or desirable are in yellow. So excitement, happy, productive, accomplished. So anything that is in yellow is that. And then tired, lethargic, exhausted, frustration, like all those are in red. Um, but here is another interesting thing. So we can split this screen. So now we have two graphs side by side you can compare things like work 
and YouTube. So what do I talk about most in my thing? Do I talk about work more or do I talk about YouTube? So I mean work has more. Okay and then the final thing that I want to talk about is the random note and this is very simple you just uh, hit the random note and it gives you a day. So Sunday 14th March I woke up at 9 a.m. and it's just a way to sort of travel back into the past and just see what you did when and because it's random it can be last week it can be last year and this is one of the ways for you to gain that like self-awareness because you, you get to relive a day from your past and see it from a new perspective with like new knowledge and some distance and then you can yeah see how you feel about that and uh, time does interesting things to everything it touches and sometimes it's interesting to find out that a thing you wrote about feeling so strongly about you've completely forgotten that's also a way to make the randomness more fun and more impactful and that's by sending a letter to your future self. I'm going to make a video about that soon. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified when that video is up. Anyway, I hope you found these tips useful. And if you have any questions with regards to journaling or Obsidian, let me know in the comments down below. Remember that at the end of the day, Obsidian is just a note-taking app. And if this is the first video you're watching about journaling on Obsidian, well, hello. Secondly, I made a video about why I think Obsidian is great for journey journaling and how to set it up for that. So check it out after this. I'll put the link in the description down below. Meanwhile, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.